inspiration for Nathan Hill stems from an array of life's experiences and adventures. We moved around a lot. I, I think I'm, I lived in eight homes before the age of 16. We would usually leave every you know, two to three years. And, and I think that really serves me well as a writer. Uh, I think um, all, the, all that training um, of, uh, you know, always being in a new situation, always meeting new people, always trying to figure out where I fit. It's always, you're always trying to figure out what's under the hood of someone else. And I think that's kind of one of the jobs of a novelist. His world travels and his love of the art have heavily influenced his work as an author. I like the adventure. I like, I, I like the unexpectedness. I like seeing Lately, I've been really into landscapes, like really epic landscapes. So I've gone to the Arctic Circle recently and Patagonia and Tasmania and like going to those places that really feel like you're at the end of the world. The quietness, the, the, uh, the, 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 the landscape, it's, it just brings me like joy and peace. His passion for photography shines throughout his latest novel, Wellness. The protagonist, Jack, is an artist who creates cameraless photography pieces known as chemograms. Each chapter displays those chemograms, which Nathan constructed himself. I just remember thinking these abstract pictures were so incredibly beautiful, and wouldn't it be interesting if Jack made those kinds of pictures? You know, you never know what's going to happen when you drip the chemicals into the water bath and they spread across a a, 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 some photo paper. It's different every time and it's always kind of an, an adventure. He began writing wellness as a short story during his mid-twenties. Set in Chicago, Jack and Elizabeth are a young couple who are forced to face a number of challenges in their marriage as the world and everything around them evolves. And I just moved uh, into a new apartment in New York City and my, my window looked out across an alley into a wall of other windows. And I, you know, you can kind of see, see into other people's apartments. And I remember, you know, thinking like, maybe this was a cool tableau and I, maybe I'd have, you know, uh, a story where two people s catch glimpses of each other across the alley and slowly fall in love. And I looked at that short story and I was just like, well, yeah, it was a very, it was a pretty romantic story, but those people are also really naive. So it just got me thinking like, well, what would have happened to them? Like, if they grew up and experienced the radical change that happened in the world in the last, like, 25 years, what would have become of that couple? When Jack and Elizabeth's personal narratives begin to interfere with their relationship, it causes them to confront their underlying issues. They have kind of constructed a past that's heroic, a past that, that, um, uh, that is romantic, and a past that is a very attractive to the other person, but the problem is that actual lives and actual marriages are a lot messier than stories, and so if you start believing those stories a little too rigidly, it can create problems when inevitably something doesn't fit to that narrative. I am so delighted to be able to share this novel with you as my 102nd book club selection. It's a love story and will leave you wondering if love can really stand the test of time. I think it's an open question, and it's one of the questions that I think the characters in the book are wrestling with. They don't know, they, they almost don't recognize themselves from the past anymore, and it's almost like, how are those people, us, and they're, they're having trouble synthesizing that. I, I sort of love the, the drama of that.